so awesome. So then that collaboration with uh, Static led to management. Right. Led to a booking agency. Um, and so now there were other things that you were also doing in your career as an independent artist. Yeah. That created a lot of noise for you. Um, not only were you, you were doing something called uh, Music Mondays. Yeah. Can you tell us in that a, was, um, a little bit about that? That was a concept that me and my manager came up with. Um, because the thing that they were most stoked about with me and that I feel like is kind of a unique trait is that I can, I can make music really fast for whatever reason. Um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. <laughs> but like, um, so yeah, so we had this concept about Music Monday. And, you know, I, I had all these like few releases lined up like the one on Excisions label and stuff yeah. like that for in the future um, but I wanted to give away a bunch of music so we came up with this concept of Music Monday where I would give away a free track every Monday and we weren't really sure how long we were going to do it for and we ended up doing it for like nine weeks wow and how what was the method for releasing that free music um was it uh, your SoundCloud page yeah or? well it was <clears throat> rooted originally on my SoundCloud page but um, I did the, the the like to download thing on Facebook, which is like a, a great thing that I, I highly recommend to everyone. Um, and you pretty much what you do is you just set a buy link on your SoundCloud to click the buy link, and then go to directly to your Facebook page. And they have to like your Facebook page to get the download. And it's just like a media fire link. It's, it's a pretty simple concept, but it, it adds up really quickly. It builds your likes. And your, yeah. yeah. Like for example, like the first remix I did for Music Monday was for Adventure Club, the um, that Need Your Heart remix. Right. And um, they also like asked them to post my link instead of like you know an external link or whatever. And I got I think I got two thousand likes the first day. Wow! On Facebook, that was, was that direct. was for Adventure Club, right? Yeah, for the Adventure Club remix. So was it easy to get a hold of them and get them to support? Yeah, them? well, I had I had played a couple shows with them okay. previous, so we we were friends. Um, so just kind of reached out, and that was kind of in the moment in time where everyone was either remixing them or Cruella. Mm -hmm. um, so I did both of those, you know, I did, I did two remixes for Cruella and then I did one for Adventure Club. But to have their support on that um, was a really big deal. Right. You know, it was like something like 60,000 plays in like a day wow. on SoundCloud. Um, but so yeah, so I did the Music Monday thing and... Um, and so this is, this is a concept that anyone can employ that wants to get the word out. Yeah, I mean, we pretty much just made it up and uh, like made a title up for it, you know? There's People. something important about developing a rhythm with your audience, yeah. right? Like, both in the way that you communicate with them, the way they release music, mm -hmm. um, so that they know on a continual basis that they're going to have communication, they're going right. to get music from you. Yeah, it took about, I think, I would say like three weeks for people to really like, get it and be stoked that, that there would be new, new music, you know? There aren't too many artists that just give away free music all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but the ones that do are some really successful ones. Um, so, so yeah, so I got to do that. And um, by the end of the nine weeks, I had gone from like 9,500 likes on Facebook to like 17,000 or something wow. like that. That's awesome. You doubled your, you, you doubled your fan base yeah. through that one single concept. Um, we're going to take questions in a, in a couple of minutes, um, but I want to wrap up this part of the conversation with something else that happened because of the Adventure Club remix. Oh, the video? It got picked up by, yeah. uh, what is the guy's name? His name is Marquis Scott. Marquis Scott, that's right. So this is a video that you didn't approach him, right? He just happened to get a hold of the video on his own? Yeah, no, actually Layton from Adventure Club just tweeted me one day and was like, check this video out and it didn't have many views and then I checked it like four days later. And it was like a million views, and, and it's, it was it was on the homepage of yeah. It's what is it four almost, almost four million right now, right? Yeah, it was on the homepage of like CNN, and wow. Yahoo, and all this crazy stuff. So all these small sites that nobody goes to, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> no one's homepages. Yeah, let's check out a little bit of the video.
That's so good. I hate to stop it. <laughs> so interesting how you create a piece of music, another artist gets a hold of it, and all of a sudden it goes viral, and you've got four million people that are listening to your music. That, but that wasn't the only track that that happened to, right? There was in the, the track Problematic yeah. also had a similar story. So mm -hmm. can you tell us about that? Yeah, I mean, so Problematic is, I would say, probably one of my more popular songs that I did uh, with Keswick. And uh, actually, Marquise, the guy who did that video, was part of this group called Remote Control, mm -hmm. who um, they were well, on that show, So You Think You Can Dance, I think. He's one of the three? No, he wasn't. He actually backed out because he was getting whatever more popular. He was doing stuff. his own thing. They replaced him, but um, <clears throat> yeah. The, the the funny thing about that the the problematic video is that it's also like they did they performed it at halftime of like a Grizzlies Knicks game or something like that, which I heard about, which is pretty cool. Oh, so they they uh, went out at the halftime show at a, a basketball game. Yeah, awesome. And do you routine. have that video? Can yes. you check it out? Like we were talking about, there is no end goal, but there is a sequence of events that begins to build your path. Right. It's and you never know which track, which connection, which person you speak to, which show you do, is actually going to open that door to the next part of your career. You right. Know? A lot of people think that they can plan success, but the only thing you can plan on is being dedicated to what you're doing until that achieves success. Right. Wouldn't you agree? 